Thank you, right. Dirk. Should I? <laughs> I'll share my screen and start. Okay. Well, Please thanks. do. Thank you. Okay, there we go. Thanks very much. So, um, as Dirk has introduced us already, the title of our, our presentation um, Fusion Solutions for Remote Performers, a Telepresence Stage. And what we're doing today is we're presenting some outcomes from a project that uh, Steve and I are currently working on. It's a Arts and Humanities Research Council funded project. It's part of the COVID response program of projects. And we're um, working particularly with, with theatre companies in this project um, and undertaking a number of residencies with these particular companies where we're looking at, at alternatives to Zoom. Uh, methods of, of collaborative performance that surpass all the um, limitations of Zoom and other kinds of platforms and finding new models and new ways of experiencing theatre online in a telepresence situation. Um, but to do that, we'd like to just give a little bit of a precursor to some earlier work that, um, that both I have done and, and some work that Steve has done that really sets the sort of, sort of uh, the stage for, for this project and why we're doing it. So my, my background is in telematic arts and video installation since the 1990s. And the work goes back to this particular piece here, Telematic Dreaming, that was presented in, um, in Finland uh, across in the 90s using fiber optic ISDN telephone lines uh, between two locations. And my, the image of my body was projected on one bed where, perform, where, where gallery um, participants could interact with my with my image that I could then respond to them with and it encountered all the, the a sense of a shift of senses of being able to touch with my eyes the first time I could identify with a third space with a with a co-located coexistence and of course the intimacy of the bed surface was a was a complex space that, that really heightened and charged the, the the intimacy and connection with that remote person I went on to do other works, this one perhaps more akin to the sort of research we're doing with the project now, Telematic Vision, this was at the ZKM in Karlsruhe in 93, using two sofas that, that brought people into the same television programme, the same, the voyeurs of their own spectacle, and this is when we were first encountering this, this notion of the, of the digital other, the, the, the being able to, to gaze upon the, 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 the other as self, and combining this kind of this phenomenological, phenomenological experience of, of collaborating in a coexistent shared space and observing the self rather like a, a, a puppet or a human avatar on screen. And I'll hand over to Steve to say a few words about some other work that uh, he's, he's led um, collaborated on. Okay, so in 2006, uh, Paul and I worked together with other collaborators on, on Heimlich. And this is the German title of Freud's book on the uncanny. Uh, it used what was at the time a very high speed internet connection together with chroma key techniques. If we have a look at the video, <clears throat> it uses a series of virtual backgrounds to bring together two female actors in an empty studio in London, uh, with conference delegates in the USA. They voluntarily mount the stage for an entirely improvised and spontaneous encounter. Roy Ascot once famously asked whether there is love in the telematic embrace. This installation suggests the answer is definitely You've got yes. a firm handshake. Where are you? Well, this is a, a road we travel down often. We, we live somewhere up there. Via the internet, these uncanny interactions span thousands of miles and several time zones, yet the feeling of co-presence and of occupying the same space is highly defined. The sense of virtual touch is something that delights participants and leads to some moment of real contact and intimacy. The piece explores how the presence of a virtual body in front of us elicits our desire and will for an intimate encounter. Now our current telepresence stage project uses similar ideas, but more advanced and, and differing techniques and systems. It helps to create theater and dance in the context of the pandemic and in the light of lockdowns and safe distancing issues. It aims to go beyond the limitations of Zoom style video conferencing platforms. 
Now, despite some interesting Zoom theater examples, we don't feel the boxes format with their very solid four walls is ideally fit for purpose. The format resem resembles live television far more than theater, and the box frames are artificial distances. They act like battery chicken coops to cage and restrain the performers. So we're looking to establish online theatre platforms that liberate the performers' bodies from the entrapment of Zoom boxes. Real-time video images, uh, <coughs> are, are, we change the start slide now, Paul, uh, you see on the right-hand side, rather than Zoom, real-time video images uh, of the remote performers are merged within virtual stage sets where participants appear to coexist in the same shared space. The project aims to develop effective and affordable new approaches to connect performers from their separate homes or studios. It enables them to improvise, devise, rehearse and perform together as if on a real stage. Our systems aim to bring new levels of sophistication, intimacy and creativity to video conference based performance work. The really good metaphor or example of that concept is, is the paper, uh, paper theatre, the Victorian paper theatre, that consists of 2D layers of, of performers, of the wings, of backgrounds and foregrounds, and dealing with theatre in, 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 in a traditional way, referring to up and down stage and stage left and right, all the sort of uh, um, elements of theatre are present in the sort of work that we're exploring with this telepresence stage project. We deal with video in a very similar way by compositing layers, moving layers forward and backward. We can put, we can move uh, actors around objects um, and, and treat it in a, very, in a very similar theatrical way. We're using some of the te technology, we're using some, some very current state-of-the-art technology. We're working with all sorts of things from VJing software, gr green screening, um, live bro broadcast uh, internet video using web RTC and, and NDI technologies, all these latest things to try and get low latency, high quality video that we can we can work with that is that is that is with we're not within the constraints of a box, as Steve was saying, and that's really essential. We work with eight companies and we provide those for those residences. We provide them with equipment. We provide them with green screens and webcams and lights. Each participant has this in their own home or their studio space. And we, we provide that, that, that kit and we give them instructions on how to set that up. We provide information on on how to install the equipment, where to where to put to place the, the, the equipment, particularly we, we, we encourage them to use extra screens that surround the green screen so they can look at TV screens elsewhere, not only at the, at the laptop screen, uh, which we'll come to that later, we'll mention why we do that. Um, a typical residency that we, we do um, lasts about, we, we do it over a number of weeks, we, we, we do set the, these sessions, we do five practice-based sessions where they, they join us from their homes using using their basic sort of um, uh, uh, laptop computers, um, and we, we we take them through a residency where we 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 finalise with a performance piece. They actually create a piece of work out of this residency, and some of them have never used this technology before, and they they get to learn how to use it, how to understand telepresence interaction and orientation of their body in telepresence space and self reflection. It's so looking at themselves as the performer on screen. All these things we explore. And one of the first projects we, we did was a pilot project. This was Telematic Quarantine um, that, that um, I, I pre produced uh, and, in, and in collaboration with, with Steve Laser from at LaSalle College of Arts with, with colleagues there and students. And I produced this piece for the Limestone Coast Video Art Festival. Um, and it was literally using my home, my, my home as my own environment, and Skype actually was, was the main platform. This was an er early on in this, this uh, work, and here's a short clip of this now, and I'll talk a bit more about it in a moment. Well, come on, open up. You better, you better come in then, actually. Hang on. There's been some unusual activity. Yeah, actually from the congregation, just down the road. You know, oh, down you? the road. You just got up. You, it's in, early in the morning still. Oh uh, yeah, forgive me. I'm, I wasn't expecting visitors quite so early. 
So the piece was a complete improvisation and participants were invited to join me via Skype, to just essentially just call me on Skype. And all I asked them to do was to make sure they had a green screen behind them. And I did all the, all the compositing and keying and the performing simultaneously. So I was controlling everything actually with an iPad using a, a kind of MIDI uh, uh, device uh, that, that I, I could control um, the scenes, the, the foregrounds and the backgrounds. And, the, the participants, Steve, Steve uh, were joining me there with Philippe Severa, uh, and um, didn't they, they prepared small scenes and episodes that I wasn't really aware of, but I had, but it was completely improvised. And of course, the theme was all around the pandemic, quarantine. So we were looking at we were looking at all sorts of aesthetic styles around that. In, even in my, through my kitchen window, there are protesters. we administering some acupuncture we, it was a complete exploration and um and for me a, a, a joy to do it was a really a really immersive experience of, of being in my own home in a telepresence situation oh steve you're muted one of our first uh, residency groups was Phoenix Dance Theatre, uh, who had no real previous experience of telematic work. Their emphasis was on investigating the cre creative possibilities of the virtual spaces, and they used free imp improvisation rather than formal choreography. We'll have a look at some video. Background images were used to inspire simple narrative situations, a living room, a road at night, and a Mad Hatter's tea party. The dancers were fascinated by the opportunity to create alternative viewpoints uh, that were impossible to achieve in live stage settings. They explored at one point a series of scenic holes and th these inspired narratives related to hiding and revealing, absence and presence, jeopardy and safety and being here and being there. They sometimes positioned their camera above their heads pointing down to give an unusual vertical perspective. The ability to quickly adjust the visual scale of each performer led to playful improvisations with giant arms, feet and hands. Seemingly flouting safe distancing rules, but actually joining one another from their separate homes. Two actors from Creation Theatre here sit across the table of Paul Cezanne's classic painting, The Card Game, from uh, 1895. They've placed their own domestic uh, tables and chairs at home covered in green cloth to exactly line up with those in the painting so that they can appear to truly inhabit its virtual space. We'll look at some video. It's a nice pipe. Sorry, I've, I've dropped a bit of tobacco on the uh, on the table. I don't mind me. You're right. Sorry, there's a little bit of tobacco there. Oh, I see. Is, it, is this about my foot on the table? We each of us have our little foibles, don't we? The actors enthusiastically explore the illusionary, laconic and comic potentials of creating live telematic theatre. They use a mix of ingenuity, sleight of hand and comic slapstick. They wonder why a mug of wine poured by one of them cannot be tasted by the other. But like Sam, uh, absurd Samuel Beckett characters, they seem destined to, uh, to try and fail and try and fail again, but better. Games are played, including an intense card game of Snap. The cards are dealt and are miraculously picked up by the player opposite, and wads of banknotes suddenly appear as the stakes are raised. The actors called it an eye-opening experience for them and felt like they were discovering an entirely new medium. They enthused about its magical possibilities and reflected its similarities with a sort of visual conjuring created by early cinema pioneers such as George Melier. Paul. And one of the things we mentioned, mentioned earlier on was about having screens on either side of the green screen and these performers they were using this particularly in, in an innovative way. So they, they, the table position allowed them to have a dialogue across the table and not look at their screen that they would normally do like in a, in a, in a laptop screen or, or the screen, the camera straight up, straight up face on, but in profile. So they looked at the screen to actually 
um, understand themselves in the third space in this shared space, but also to make that 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 connection that they're looking at the other person, and therefore both entering into a dialogue, into a remote dialogue, that they coexist in this other space together, where they can they can then feel as though they are truly performing together at this table where they coexist, not not in their green screens, but at the at the physical um, at, at the at the virtual green table is where they actually are performing. Uh, for their residency, Pigeon Theatre decided strategically to commence with no initial preconceptions or creative ideas and start entirely from uh, a blank page. This was in order to allow the platform and the virtual spaces to really help inspire and prompt the storylines and dramaturgical ideas. A number of digital scenographies were created as the project progressed from a building fronted with ornate Gothic windows to a long corridor with multiple doors, which were sometimes open and sometimes closed. We'll see a clip. Where are we now? I'm here. I don't know where you are. Oh, don't worry, I'm here too. Oh, I wasn't worrying. Their 25 minute performance follows two mother characters as they lose and find their children and one another in various locations. They tidy away toys, converse, drink and dance. It extends the, extends the company's ongoing exploration of identity politics in a novel way, using compositing techniques to interrogate notions of selfhood and otherness. This sense of togetherness, despite of course being actually in their separate homes, is pronounced, but so too is an increasing sense of separation and alienation from one another, which intensifies dramatically as the performance progresses. The company reflected that one of the most satisfying aspects of the project for them was that it led to a radical change from their usual style of performance, where previously their work was grounded in place and the down-to-earth material realities of site-specific events, this production explored out-of-the-ordinary spaces. As, as one performer reflected, quote, it opened up new levels of imagination with a feeling of a kind of otherworldliness. This is so completely opposite to any pigeon show we do normally. It opened a kind of fantasy world where you're not quite sure what is beginning or who is who. Now, the two performance, performers reflected on how intense the working experience was for them, describing a three hour rehearsal in virtual space as equivalent to nine hours in a physical studio. They noted the performance experience still felt like theater rather than television, particularly because of the live audience and experiencing the same nervous stage fright as it begins. But they also referred to it as, quote, a kind of isolated theater experience, doing it in a void. They concluded that not only did the project enable them to work together remotely and safely during lockdown, but to work from home with their respective children with them. This avoided the need for childcare arrangements, which their rehearsals normally involve. And we feel this may be a significant benefit for many performers, regardless of their wider experiences. One of the most recent um, residences we've done is with a group called Gutter Snipe Theatre. Uh, this is a London-based um, all-female uh, young company who are ma mainly work in, in cabaret and club venues um, and for them this was a, an entirely new direction. They hadn't explored this sort of work before. They had made a lot of video promotion work of their performances um, but they were, they were working on a project on a, on a, on a production uh, around um, on the theme of, of the talent show of uh, Britain's Got Talent, the X Factor, but they were working with the dark side of the sort of a, a, a satirical dark journey where they where they end up in a world of, of coercion and control of the Illuminati. So it takes on a, a, a sort of satire of these these uh, talent show competitions. So it was a merger of television and theatre. We'll watch a bit of video now. We'll talk a bit more about that. Emma, you made me ruin my TikTok. Oh, sorry, Jude. Give me that phone. <laughs> Rook, give that back. Raised on the streets, lip gloss on fleek. <laughs> oh, 
I'm gonna say you smashed it, okay? You knocked it out the park. You killed it. You crushed it. And for this residency, we, we worked with a guest researcher, Boyd Branch, who is a lecturer at uh, Coventry University and also has just finished his PhD at the University of Kent. And Boyd was working on a similar kind of project and had developed his own bit of software called Virtual Director that involved 3D, he could input 3D environments and models that actors could actually perform within. He'd done a lot of work with improvisation. Um, and actually that's an open source bit of software, details of which are all available on our website. Um, we, but Boyd's aesthetic, the style really lended itself to the aesthetic style of, of Gutter Snipe Theatre and the sort of um, production they, they wanted to achieve. They particularly enjoyed performing um, recorded actors. So they actually played all the act, all the different parts, the judges, the, 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 the boy band competition. And some of those were, were, were pre-recorded. Some of those involved costume changes and all sorts of elements that they, they, they perfected over the residency uh, period. So, Steve, I'll hand over to you. OK, this is the full team of researchers working on the project. Now, beyond the exploration of these novel creative and technical ideas we're working on, the project hopes to also advance new knowledge around phenomenological questions of coexistence, intimacy, immersion and remote presence. While the pandemic is expected to be a time limited issue, please, uh, these techniques actually hold value for performers and creators of theatre and dance well beyond lockdown. For example, for long distance collaborations or for artists balancing work and caring responsibilities. The companies involved feel the techniques can be valuable quite independent of the pandemic and are likely to become part of their regular toolkit in the future. Now, since theatre has always been a place of illusion and artificial sets where performers act, to use Stanislavski's phrase, as if they were in a castle in Denmark, the telepresence stage paradigm actually remains in perfect keeping, we think, with, with theatrical tradition. Performers therefore generally respond to these telematic uh, theatre approaches with great eagerness, enthusiasm and even ease. Now from their living rooms they can enter a brightly lit stage to meet other live performers and they find themselves doubly at home. In these shared virtual spaces, performers can workshop, rehearse and perform in new ways. The paradigm offers a heightened sense of communion and engagement. It reframes theatrical artifice collaborative experience and creative play for a post-pandemic society. So just very briefly, just to say we have three, three final uh, residencies that we're going to be working with, a project up until May, and we're working with some established uh, regional theatre companies for the far, far, final three, Improbable, based in London, and Experimental Theatre, Red Ladder Theatre in Leeds and the Bristol Old Vic, all established theatres. We're going to be doing residencies with right up until May next year and when, when the project ends. The details, of course, are all on our website. And um, well, thank you very much. Well, thank you, guys. That's that's super superbly interesting, actually, uh, with a lot of the work that we're doing around here. Um, grateful to listen to that. Um, what were some of the? I mean, you know, I think I love the playfulness of everything, and I like the kind of virtuosity with the chroma king. You know, I think that there's there's a fluidity to it that is really cool, and this idea of Kind of being steeped in theater but also pushing the realities of the boundaries of reality i think those things were some things that really stuck with me um and actually this telematics package package is something that that we've been thinking about as well like how do you get people to really have the right tools you know it's so, so difficult so i think that's great what, what were some of the struggles you guys faced though you know even though once you put all this equipment together you send it out do you find that people Cap, get onto it very easily or is there is the instructions work out really quite well that they don't struggle or is it pretty I don't know you know how does it go working with the uh, people in general the actors um I can quickly just say I mean fortunately with a project like this we have we have uh, some some technical support as well so so Steve and I can rely on on, on some on, a, on our technician who can who can prepare the, the, the participants they won't be many of them are not familiar with having done this sort of work before uh, that they, they may not even know the the um, the bandwidth of their own of their own broadband and so we have to sort of problem solve a few things and make sure that that they're using ethernet cables and generally got they've got their lighting set up that there's not a, not a window open 
daylight behind their green screen. Uh, we provide as much, in, you know, a, a, pack, a pack of information of, 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 of how they should set up and what they should prepare for. And, um, and we have to coordinate the timings and these sorts of things. So there's a lot of background work that, that needs to be done. It's not, not, not as straightforward as just, just logging in and, and it happens. They need to they need to spend half an hour setting up their green screens. And, and interestingly, that the Gutter Snipe Theatre really got that down to absolute art at the end of their residency. They, they were very quick setting it up and they, they talked about it like a ritual as though setting it up and then closing it down was also a sort of a strange, sudden sort of um, dislocation from this collaboration experience they just had. Yeah. So, so they, they work on it, you said, over two, three weeks, if I understood correctly and so through that time that I guess they they develop that facility do, do they do they also mention you know as it gets easier to do I guess they also are, are find new ways of exploration is that right I mean do they find you know it opens up possibilities yeah I, th I think as they become more familiar with it they actually get more more ambitious uh, and yeah. sometimes actually um, some of the things they were, they were exploring uh, you know passing props or, or, or whatever, and the sort of the magical uh, illusion of, of being in the, in the same space. And, and, and ac actually, I think sometimes we started to discourage them or they discouraged themselves from doing too much of that. Otherwise it just became sort of conjuring, <laughs> conjuring tricks. But I think sometimes there is that, uh, that tendency to, to really love that kind of, that play of, mag uh, uh, of magic, but, but sometimes it, it actually starts to disrupt the sort of the storytelling and the wider, uh, the wider thea theatric theatricality so i think that's what one issue that people play with there's, there's such a great novelty particularly because you know mm -hmm. the majority of the companies hadn't really worked in in this way before using chroma key or remote uh, you know tele telepresence i love that the 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 table and, and then playing cards and everything and, and just how you know how natural that came about but also how simple it was i mean it wasn't you know it wasn't eight million things it wasn't eight million you know uh, tricks and views and you know it was a single shot so it was very theater like in that sense you know you feel like you're sitting in a seat watching this happen i'm going to assume that the screen is facing that's what they have the second screen right so the second screen is set up so they can look at that and so they can play to the screen rather than Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, Otherwise, it's like, hello. Yeah, so the, the <laughs> nice to see you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but the, but the monitor, the monitor is there, and and they yeah. just had it the way they need they needed to look, and they were, you know, so that really worked effect worked effectively for for them, I think. And and I think that yeah, that that simplicity, uh, you know, it, it is very very nice in that in that one. That said, going back to your earlier question, it took ages to actually just get it minutely correct. Um, you know, the positioning of their domestic tables and the sort of sizing um, and, and all of that. So that's all part of that, that pre-preparation. Pre and the first sort of day or two, or the first session or two, and, and, and Paul works very, very closely mentoring, uh, you know, the, the technical, technical aspect. It is really about just getting those things right, and then they can repeat it uh, the next time they, they come into a session. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's quite, it's quite, it's quite convincing. Um, but like, but you know, I mean, convincing as in it, it, it does seem as though they're in the same space uh, on on some level, which is great. Um, but yeah, the layering is interesting, and that the, the idea of the pa the the paper paper plays a perfect perfect example of a way to think about it. I, I thought that was interesting. Um, you know, so I, I, that's interesting. Uh, you're using mostly vMix and and Resolume, is that right? Yes, that's that's essentially what we've been using, and um, but but with um, of course there's OBS Ninja and those sorts of things that can be used. There was and, and OBS can be used as well as different yeah. as open source models. We're looking at all sorts of different techniques, everything from Skype, everything from what doesn't cost anything to something that might might be a larger budget and a, and a, and a theatre company might want to invest more money into. So we're not we're not trying to push one one particular uh, hardware or software at all. It's more about yeah. the concepts. Yeah. The idea is that it's also scalable. So, and on our website, we we sort of publish, um, very, you know, very open source in terms of this is how you can do it at home, folks. You know, and how students can do it, but sort of next to no no budget, providing you've got a, a laptop and you know and <laughs> and a bit of green green cloth you can put behind you and so on. So, yeah. that's great. That's great. Well, oh, thanks guys so much. Uh, really, really appreciated the sharing. Um, I have a number of colleagues who are currently teaching who are sorry to miss it. Um, who I will be sharing, we'll be sharing this with them as well, uh, because they, uh, Peter Cezali, because uh, we're doing similar things as well. So it'd be good for him to, to hear some of this and see how we can share. So thank you both very much.